Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we are going to take a look at Silverlight and how we can use behaviors. A behavior is a way to add or extend built-in feature set of UI elements in Silverlight. A behavior allows us to add additional state to a UI element. We'll take a look how we can do that. And we'll take a look how we can bind our behavior to our UI element, both using code as well as XAML. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this episode, we're going to take a look how to create custom behaviors for our Silverlight application. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this demo within a Windows Phone 7 application, but it would work just the same with the exact same code if you're doing it within a standard Silverlight application. I'm just going to use a Windows Phone 7 just so it's a little simpler. What we're going to do is we're going to create a behavior that will extend the way that a text box does this binding. If you've ever done text box with binding, you'll know that whenever you're typing in a characters in your text box, the binding event's not firing. It doesn't fire until it actually loses focus of the text box. This works in most scenarios, but what if you're trying to filter based on keystrokes? You want to be able to fire the binding immediately. There's a couple ways you could do this. I find using the behavior is the simplest way to do that, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, I've already added reference to my Calibre and Micro assemblies here, just so I can have my MBVM helpers set up. I've already gone and have created my base view model here, and let's go ahead and complete my view model. And I'm going to create a property called search text. Let's go ahead and add a backing field to that. And let's go ahead and set up the notify property changed event so that we can actually get the notification that the binding is taking place. The next thing I want to do is I'll, I've already wired up my view model. I'm just, nope, no, I haven't. Need to though. Now we're just going to do this a simple way. Of course, if you're using Calibre Micro to its full extent, you could use its convention-based uh, uh, view model binding or view model location to take care of this for you. But we're just going to go ahead and do this manually for now. And now we want to go ahead and add our text box to our UI. And then we're going to add a couple text blocks so that we can see the data update in real time. Let's go over here. We can change our bind text to be binding to search text. And then we're also going to do the same thing above. We need to make sure to set the mode to be two way. So now we've set up our UI. Let's go ahead and do one other thing to our on our text that's going to be updated in real time. Let's go ahead and change the foreground to red just so that we can see it be updated. So that's all I need to do to the UI. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and create my behavior. Now I'm going to create a behavior. It's very simple. And I'm actually going to show you how to attach that behavior to your app two different ways. The first way will be via XAML. And the second way will be in the code behind or in the code. So let's go ahead and create our immediate update behavior. And in order to create a behavior, you do need to inherit off of behavior. And you'll notice it's wanting me to add reference to system.windows interactivity, a behavior of type T. I'm going to go ahead and use a text box so that we can attach it to a text box. You can actually put any dependency object type within this argument here. Um, we're going to go ahead and make it specific for a text box. Now, the behavior has two methods that you want to override, on attach and on detaching. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, what is it you want to do when you're dealing with on attach and on detaching? What we want to do here is actually, in our behavior, we want to set up an event that listens for the text box changed event so that we can push in and generate the binding expression. So here we're going to say associated object. What the associated object is, is that is a pointer back to the thing the behavior is bound to. We're going to say text changed. 
We'll go ahead and create our on-text change here in a second. And what we want to do now is we've created our, our event handler on text change. We again we want to go to associated object dot get binding expression. And we want to do text box dot text property and update source. And basically we're just going to tell the binding to fire. That is our behavior. It's a total of three lines of custom code. Not a lot. The trick is, how do we get it to work within our XAML? How do we actually set it up so it works? All right, let's take a look how we can do that. Let's just get rid of our, our design surface there. What we want to do is go to our text box, and we want to add the behavior to the text box directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do enter action. Let the IntelliSense pop me up and add a reference to the, the Microsoft Expression Interactivity namespace. And we're going to say Behaviors. And then here, I'm just going to add my immediate update behavior. And it should... Oops, did I mistype it? Let's go ahead and copy-paste from the name just to be safe I didn't mistype it. There you go. I've now added the behavior to a text box to have it bind immediately. So let's go ahead and try this. So our application is up and running. And if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to type and have it respond in real time. And sure enough, I can. That's pretty cool. Now, I said that there's two ways to set up the binding of a behavior. The other way is to do it via the code. To do this, let's go ahead and comment out our XAML bindings. Now I'm going to need to go ahead and name this, so let's call this search text box. The reason I'm going to name this is I'm going to actually need to do some stuff in the code behind. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create two methods. The first is going to be to attach the behavior. The second is going to be to detach the behavior. To attach the behavior, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and grab the behavior off of the existing text, search text box. So I'm going to do interaction dot get behaviors for search text box. Hence the reason I need to name it. Let's go ahead and grab our behaviors collection. And we're going to say if the collection doesn't already contain our behavior, let's go ahead and add it. So if we don't already have it, let's go ahead and make sure we can add it. Why am I getting a little squiggly? because I was forgetting a, or I had the parentheses in the wrong spot. And then we're going to say behaviors collection dot add new immediate behavior. So we can then add a behavior. To remove the behavior, it's very similar. We just basically need a query. And the first thing we say is behaviors collection where I'm going to go ahead and execute this immediately by asking for the list. We'll call this found, found behaviors. And then we're going to say if it's greater than zero, let's go ahead and remove them all. that will both attach and detach. Let's go ahead and add the attach call here. Now let's go ahead and prove that we can detach it. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bounce back to design view real quick just so I don't have to worry about positioning stuff myself. We'll 
We'll just wire up an event for this, who cares? And we'll say detach immediate behavior. So let's go ahead and rerun this, and if everything worked as expected, I should now see the exact same results as before, but also have the ability to detach it so I can stop that behavior from running. So our app is loaded, and if everything works, I get my results, which I do. Now if I click this detach button, my behavior is no longer there. So you can see, creating a behavior is very simple. Basically, a behavior has two methods you need to override, an attaching and an on it, or detaching. This basically tells us it's being hooked up and on and removed. And then you need to do something special. In our case, we're going to hook up to the text change event of the, bound, or the object that the behavior is attached to. We're going to use its associated object. We're going to force the binding. To set up the behavior to actually use it, you can do it two ways. The first is to set everything up via the XAML. Basically, you need to use the interaction.behaviors and just add the behavior. If you want to do it via code, which sometimes you want to do if you want to add or remove the behaviors dynamically, you just need to add a couple lines of code. Um, you need to make sure to name the UX element that you're actually going to be attaching the behavior to. One thing to remember, on a text box, if you want to do this, you need to set the mode to two-way. If you don't, you won't get the binding to fire from the data entry, only from the initial binding. 